Now we're going to look at elastic and inelastic collisions. The difference is very simple. An elastic collision is when the kinetic energy is conserved. An inelastic collision is when the kinetic energy is not conserved. For example, an explosion. Um, you start off with two trolleys that are static, then a spring pushes them apart, one goes in one direction, one goes in another direction. So from zero kinetic energy, you get to a, a net sum of kinetic energy which is greater than zero. So this is an inelastic collision. Um, always remember that momentum must be conserved. I marked a paper once where one of the candidates um, did the calculation and and the value before was, was 200 joules and afterwards they were told that it was 150 joules and the question was is it an elastic collision and he said yes it is an elastic collision because the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy afterwards are almost the same they are not the same therefore it is not elastic so he got zero even if he understood what elastic meant an elastic collision he interpreted the answer in, in a very strange way. So, can this happen? What happens if all of the momentum of two kilograms is transferred to one kilogram? So what we have is before the collision we have an object which is coming in and is going to collide with one kilogram. So this comes in here, two kilograms at 10 meters per second. Can all the momentum be transferred to the first one? Well, as far as the momentum is concerned, Mathematically, it is possible, and what we can do that is work that out. We need to look at the momentum before and the momentum afterwards. So what you need to do is to find out what is the momentum before. It's going to be mass times velocity plus mass times by zero. That's going to be first, so it's going to be 2 times 10. And afterwards, it's going to be 1 times by V. So you need to find out what the final velocity is afterwards. Remember, the momentum before is equal to the momentum afterwards. And once you've calculated what the, the final velocity is, if it is all transferred to the, the, the one kilogram mass, find out what happens to the kinetic energy before and after. When you go through and do the working, you'll find out that it ends up with more kinetic energy afterwards than it, end, than it starts with. This is not possible. Define power. The power is the rate of doing work. In other words, it's how quickly you use up energy. Rate means per unit time. So it's work done divided by time taken. For example, if you do 10 joules of work in 2 seconds, the power is going to be 10 joules divided by 2 seconds, which is 5 watts unit is watts. Let's do a little bit of manipulation. We know that the work done is uh, force times by distance divided by time gives you the power. However, distance divided by time is equal to the velocity. So that means that if we have a body which is moving against a certain force of friction, for example, at a constant velocity, we can find out the power. It's just multiplying by the force by the velocity. For an object which is moving at a constant velocity and uh, there is a, a, a constant uh, force of friction which is going to um, stop it from accelerating. So power is equal to F times V. Often they ask questions about uh, a speedboat. The, the tells you what the frictional force is, tells you what the velocity is. You need to find the maximum power rating. Here's an example. A car has a power rating of 20,000 watts. The maximum frictional forces that stop the car from accelerating uh, add up to 1,000 newtons. So in other words, there's a frictional force of 1,000 newtons, which means you must push forward with a force of 1,000 newtons to be able to um, overcome that. So what is the maximum speed the car can reach? So power, which is 20,000, is equal to force, which is 1000, times by the maximum speed. So according to this it will be 20 meters a second. 
So these forces are balanced. 20 meters a second. A motor, there's the motor uh, there, there's the motor, raises one kilogram mass in up three meters in six seconds. If it travels three meters in six seconds. So what is the work done by this? It's one kilogram, which is 10 newtons, times by three. divided by 6 because that's the time it takes. So the power rating is 30 divided by 6 which is 5 watts. But let's say it's actually a 7.5 watt motor. So it takes 7.5 watts of electrical energy to make it work and yet it only provides 5 watts. This means it is not 100% efficient. Two thirds of the uh, power rating go to do useful work, one third is lost. So we have a, a percentage efficiency of um, it's going to be two thirds or 66 percent. So we get onto efficiency now. This is a useful energy out divided by the total energy in. Most devices cannot be more than 100 percent efficient and nearly all of them are less than 100 percent. So we take the previous example. Remember that we had a 5 watt is delivered to the um, the weight that's been lifted up but, but uh, 7.5 watt is the power rating of, of, the, of the motor it takes 7.5 watts of electrical energy so what is useful energy in? it's the energy that it takes which is 7.5 so what is the useful energy out? it's the work that we managed to do which is 5 watts what is the total energy in? is it 7.5 so it's going to be 5 divided by 7.5 which is uh, two-thirds.